let us now consider the microscopic features of fallopian tube. I am grateful to Professor Michael Horsch of University of Michigan Medical School for providing the images of histology sections used in this video. Fallopian tubes extend on both sides of the uterus towards the ovaries. Each fallopian tube is about 10 centimeters long and it has four segments from lateral to medial side. They are the infundibulum with fimbria, ampulla, isthmus and intramural parts. Fallopian tube helps in transportation of the ovulated oocyte. It forms the site of fertilization. It helps in nourishment and early development of product of conceptus through the stages of cleavage, morula and blastocyst and helps in the transportation of product of conceptus to uterus for implantation. Although the diameter of the lumen, complexity of the mucosal folding and thickness of the wall may vary between its four segments, throughout its length, the wall of the fallopian tube is made of three layers. They are the outer serosa, middle muscular layer and inner mucosa. Serosa is lined by an outer mesothelium which is made up of simple squamous epithelium and it has subserosal vascular connective tissue. Muscular layer is made up of an inner circular or spiral layer of smooth muscle fibers and an outer thinner longitudinal layer of smooth muscle. Mucosa shows longitudinal folds with lining epithelium and lamina propria. The mucosal longitudinal folds are more pronounced in infundibulum and ampulla of the fallopian tube. The folds are decreased in the isthmus region and they are reduced to just shallow bulges in the intramural part. Lining epithelium is made up of simple columnar epithelium. This lining epithelium shows two types of cells. They are the ciliated cells and the secretory non-ciliated peg cells. The ciliary current of the ciliated cells is directed towards the uterus and this helps in the propulsion of oocyte. Height of the ciliated cells and number of the cilia, they increase in the first half of the menstrual cycle and decrease in the second half. Secretions from the peg cells help in nourishing the gametes and also help in capacitation of the spermatozoa. Ciliated cells predominate in the infundibulum and ampulla region, whereas the secretory cells predominate in the isthmus and intramural parts. Lamina propria is made up of vascular connective tissue and it has abundant lymphatic vessels. So quickly recalling what we have seen so far, fallopian tubes extend from the uterus to the ovaries and contain four parts from lateral to medial aspects namely infundibulum, ampulla, isthmus and intramural parts. Wall of the fallopian tube consists of an outer serosa, middle muscular and inner mucosal layers. Mucosa is thrown into longitudinal folds. The lining epithelium is of simple columnar type with ciliated cells and secretory peg cells. Muscular layer shows inner circular and outer thinner longitudinal layers. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. You can visit this site for similar histology videos.